for the entrance. Let us take hymn number 11 on page 4 on the praise sing booklet. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, today we come together to celebrate and reflect on the importance of family apostolate within our community. We are reminded of the vital role of families in building strong and faith-filled communities. Thus, in this Holy Eucharist, let us unite in prayer, seeking God's grace to strengthen our families, foster love, unity, and service, and to recognize the sacred role of family apostolate within our faith community. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. We shall pause for a moment and pray for our own family members, parents, brother, sister, husband, wife. We shall pray for them during this moment. For the times that we have heard them, we shall ask the Lord sorry and say, I confess Rest to Almighty, Almighty God, God and, and to, to you, you, my brothers and sisters, and that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us all. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us all. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service. 
Grant, we pray, that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things that you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. A reading from the prophet Malachi. I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations. And now, O priests, this command is for you. If you will not listen, or if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will, send you the, I will send the curse upon you. You have turned aside from the way. You have caused many to stumble by your instruction. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says the Lord of hosts. And so I make you despised and abased before all the people. Inasmuch as you do not keep my ways, but show partiality in your instruction. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our fathers? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, our response will be, Keep my soul in peace at your side, O Lord. Please repeat. Keep my soul in peace at your side, O Lord. O oh Lord, my heart is not proud, nor haughty my eyes. I have not gone after things too great, nor marvels beyond me. Your response? Keep my, keep my soul, soul in, in peace, peace at, at your, your side, O oh Lord. Oh Lord. Truly I have set my soul in tranquility and silence, as a weaned child on its mother. As a weaned child is my soul within me. Your response? Keep, Keep my, my soul, soul in peace, peace at, at your side, side o, Lord. o Lord. O Israel, wait for the Lord, both now and forever. Your response? Keep, Keep my, my soul, soul in peace, peace at, at your, your side, side, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you, for you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, we worked night and day, that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. And we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly rise for the acclamation. Father who is in heaven, and you have one instructor, the Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach but do not practice. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their philanthropies broad and their fingers long. And they love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the synagogues and greetings in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you all brothers. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Christ. The greatest among you shall be your servant, Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, you hypocrites, you see, the word hypocrite is used 18 times in the New Testament, all of which comes straight from the mouth of Jesus. You see, the Greek word for hypocrites is hypocrites, And in Jesus' time, this word was used referring to stage actors, someone who pretends to be someone who they are not. On most of these occasions, Jesus called the Pharisees hypocrites. The question we may ask is why? You see, first we need to understand who the Pharisees were. The Pharisees were a sect of the Jewish community who considered themselves to be holier than the others. They isolated themselves from the rest, wore special garments, and for them the law, also known as the Torah, the first five books of our Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy was the ultimate. So what was the problem? You see, the law, as believed by the Jews, was given by God himself. However, as time passed by, the Pharisees focused so much on the law that subconsciously they took God away from it. In this way, the Pharisees started to pretend to be someone they were not, and hence, they were called hypocrites. This escalated to such an extent that even when God was in front of them in the form of our Lord Jesus, they did not receive his love, his healing, his forgiveness, all the values of the kingdom of God. Therefore, in today's gospel, our Lord Jesus tells the people to do the things that the scribes and the Pharisees tell them to do, but to not observe what they do, because they preach but do not practice. Now, the reason why I went through this with you is when we understand scripture, we must always put it into context and then relate it to our lives. Today, in our archdiocese, we celebrate Family Day. You see, families are built with God at the center and God alone. However, as we focus so much in developing our families, be it in terms of prestige, name, fame, and succumb to other pressures of this world, we too, like the Pharisees, tend to take God away from our families. You see, everything in this world is temporary, but God alone is permanent. Therefore, we must be aware to avoid such a scenario where we end up living lives where 
we try to be something or someone we are not. And I think we have already established what they are called. Now the first reading taken from the book of Prophet Malachi is a reminder to us elders to keep God as the center, at the center of all our acts as we play a vital role in guiding our families to God. It reminds us to show no partiality and to treat everyone as equal. You see, every one of us formed the body of Christ. As we journey towards being a more synodal church, we are all children of God. As St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, says we are heirs to the kingdom of God, to Jesus Christ. In the second reading, taken from St. Paul, he reminds us of the work, the effort, the sacrifices we need to put in to keep God at the center of our family life. The effort is to understand each other. The effort is to put ourselves in each other's shoes. The effort is to go the extra mile to be there for one another. We often tend to take the ones around us for granted. Today, as we celebrate Family Day, let us grab this opportunity to be grateful for each other. For the times we took our families for granted, let us acknowledge their love. For the times we fell short of loving our family members, let us express this love in words and deeds. For times we fail to give time to our family members, let us make time for them in the days to come. And in doing so, we can strengthen our family bonds. And these are some of the ways in which we can strengthen our family life. But the most important is prayer. As the old saying goes, the family that prays together stays together. Let us make time for prayer, especially the rosary. You see, we may not have a fixed time due to our busy schedules, but we need to make at least 15 to 20 minutes a day spending time in prayer, praying the rosary together as a family. You know, Vatican Council II described the Eucharist as the source and summit of our Christian life. The Eucharist is a time where we all can let go of our burdens, a time to empty ourselves, be it our worldly achievements, our worldly failures, our anxieties, and be present as children, as one family before our Lord. You see, He is our Creator, the Almighty. He knows us true and true. I would like to give you a quick example. I'm sure you're aware of the Tesla company they are developing self-driven cars. What if, for example, one day one car develops an ego and says, you know what, I can drive on my own and goes on its own merry way. Be assured the owners will pull the plug on that car. But here is different. Here we come before a Lord who is beyond our understanding. He is our creator. He created everything. And through him we receive to the Holy Eucharist, love, healing, forgiveness, forgiveness for those things that at times we find it difficult to even forgive ourselves. Hence, as we gather here today, let us be grateful for all we have, especially for our families. Let us always be grateful to God and pray in this Holy Eucharist that we may have the courage to acknowledge our blessings and the humility to humble ourselves, to forgive and seek forgiveness among our own family members and mend those broken relationships. Let us also keep in mind our parish, which is a family, and let us pray for the efforts that are going on to reconstitute the parish pastoral council and that it may be product productive and it may serve as a means to journey together along the path of faith, hope, and charity. You see, as a family, we may not have it all together, but together we may have it all.
Thank you, brother, for helping us to reflect on the family. Now let us all stand and profess our creed. I believe, believe in, God, in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the, On the third day, day he rose again, again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. For the Pope and bishops, the leaders of church, that they may, through their leadership and guidance, strengthen and unite all families in the world by love and selfless service that reflect the covenant between God and his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all married couples, that their bonds may be de deepened through the example of Christ's sacrificial love and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those facing challenges within their families, that they may find support, healing, and reconciliation through the grace of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who work in family ministries, that their efforts may be blessed with wisdom and success. Fostering sound family relationships, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all those who have lost family values of forbearance, forgiveness, understanding, that they may strive to seek reconciliation and live in peace and loving harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and pray for our own families. The brother has mentioned, are we praying together as a family at home? The rosary coming for Eucharist. Is there any unforgiveness which is there between our hearts? Are we growing together as a family, be it in our work, our studies, the daily activities that we do? Are we stagnant? And what is our contribution towards the parish as a family? We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For the offertory, let us take hymn number 126 on page 35.
three sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, become for you a pure oblation and for us a holy outpouring of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. While in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, and even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised us, Jesus, from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Mm -hmm. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, death, O Lord, Lord and profess your resurrection until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Let's pray for our family members who have passed away. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs with eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we pray, dear our Father, we thank the Lord for the gift of each member in our family. Let us together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as you obey the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but you only say, say the word, word and my, and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. For communion, please take him, hymn number 183 on page 56.
Let us pray. May the working of your power, O Lord, increase in us, we pray, so that renewed by these heavenly sacraments, we may be prepared by your gift for receiving what they promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This week program. Today's Mass, Liturgy, was conducted by members of Zone 11. I sincerely thank them. I sincerely thank each one of you for actively and joyfully participating in the Holy Eucharist and having prayed for your families and the families of our Goa Archdiocese. I was happy to note that the reflection was based on family and the point which was very focused upon is our parish itself is a family and we should live in that fashion. My thanks to the celebrant, Father Mervyn and Deacon Randall. There is now Mass at 9.30 for children and parents. 10.13 in Portuguese, and in the evening at 5.30. As you know, today it coincides so happily that we are also keeping up the family day when the church in Goa celebrates the family day. So the parish day, family day, we have a celebration, very small and short. It begins at 7 p.m. So I kindly invite all of you as you must have read the invitation that you received in our parish bulletin. So please do come, meet one another, develop uh, your fellowship and friendship and good relationship that will help us to walk hand in hand, travel together for the same purpose, that is the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. 11th November is Saturday. We have Sunday anticipated Mass at 6 p.m. The liturgy to be organized by Zone 13. The leaders, Mira Fernandez and Francis George. 12th November, Sunday. This Sunday is dedicated for altar service in our Archdiocese of Goa. 7 o'clock in the morning, Zone 14, leader Fernanda Valles, 8.15, Zone 15, Leader Annie Ferrand, 9.30, Mass for Children and Parents, 10.30, Mass in Portuguese, 5.30 in the evening, Zone 16, Leaders Richard Menezes and Alzira Fernandes. A Romaria, a pilgrimage from Penjim Parish is organized to Pilar for Novena Mass at 5.15 on 16th November, uh, that is Thursday, to pray for the canonization of Venerable Agnello de Souza, son of our soil. Our parishioners are invited to take part in this Rome Maria pilgrimage. The transport will leave at 8, uh, 4 p.m. from the church steps. Please give your names in the office. I'm holding here 
the folder to help you to write your names. Please do come. We are all fond and great devotees of Venerable Father Agnello de Souza. Let us go there together as a family and pray for his early canonization. Write your names. Transport is available, and uh, I hope you will do that at least by 10th of this month. The Goa Jesuit province uh, organizes an online Christmas fest on the theme, The Inclusive Colors of Christmas. The deadline is 16 November, with Google Form closing at 11 59 p.m. For more details, you may check our notice board or may contact Brother Irivo João, uh, a scholastic from Jesuit House. He teaches catechism in our church. And right now, you have Father Mervyn. You may also get further details from him. Members of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul are around the church premises. Please do, do help them. Our thanks and appreciation to the CCP authorities, the staff and volunteers for cleaning and beautification works done in the cemetery prior to All Souls Day. Relocation of niches on the deteriorated cemetery wall will commence from 6th November, that is tomorrow. For inquiry, if any, you may contact CCP office. Joint meeting of Parish Pastoral Council and other bodies, PET and CAT, will be held on 12th November at 10.30 a.m. in the basement hall. We request all the members to join us. As you also have heard in the homily, um, that our efforts are on to reconstitute the Parish Pastoral Council so that, you know, it becomes a great means to make our parish into a community of faith, hope, and love. Please do attend this meeting. Last Sunday's collection, 36,000 rupees, 265. We sincerely thank all of you for your generosity. Kindly rise for final blessing and let us go home and spend the Sunday joyfully with our family members. The Lord be with you and, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Hymn number 236 on page 74. We are happy Christians all united in the Lord. We belong to one family. Jesus Christ has chosen us to carry on his life over every land and sea. From the north and from the south and from the east and west, he has called us all to 